What's up my guys and girls? Welcome back to Everyday Money. How is everyone doing today? And I'm serious, let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. It's been a crazy 18 months and I'm interested to see if the majority of people that are watching this are doing better or worse or about the same as they were in the last few months, 18 months ago or, or whatever. If you're out there watching, raise your hand if you have ever heard of Warren Buffett, right? Every, pretty much everyone. His right hand man is a guy named Charlie Munger. And he has also had a very impressive career from his service in the military to his uh, time with Berkshire Hathaway. And he's a billionaire himself. And he had one of the, I think, uh, greatest pieces of advice for building your wealth and your financial future and just getting started in investing. And that is that the first hundred thousand dollars that you can accumulate and hang on to not really getting a job that pays a hundred thousand dollars but being able to look in your accounts whatever they are and it says one hundred thousand dollars or more he said that that is the hardest thing to do and then after that everything gets easier now i'm paraphrasing a little bit but that is essentially what he said. And so today we're gonna to look at why that is the case and it's, it's very interesting and it leads into a lot of why people can't save the money, they can't get ahead because it is extremely hard to get over that first hump to that first $100,000 that will really set you on the path to financial freedom at a quicker and quicker pace. So the reason that $100,000 seems like a large amount of money, it's hard for people to get there is because if you are broke or if you have 10 or $15,000 in a savings account or something, you know how long it took you to accumulate that amount of money. And thinking about having just $100,000 dollars is a pretty big deal. I know that it was for me and not too terribly long ago, I was in that boat where I had like, you know, 10 grand in the bank and I had my work retirement account, but I didn't really have any other money growing for me in a very meaningful fashion. And the reason that it's so hard to get up to that $100,000 mark is because you have to do most of the work. The compound interest isn't really working for you very much and so you just have to dedicate a lot of money to put into whatever investments that you're putting into in order to get to that $100,000 mark. Now if we look at things from the arena of the average 10% market return that you get if you invest in like a total market fund or really an S&P 500 fund or anything that tracks a large swath of the US economy. If you have $10,000 and you invest that into the markets, you're only gonna get $1,000 of returns on average. When you pump that $10,000 into there, you're not gonna see a big return, you know, like if you would have 100,000 or a million dollars. Heck, even at $50,000, you're still only gonna see a $5,000 return. And this is where that $100,000 mark really comes into play, I think for me, as far as a mental thing. Once you're at $100,000, you should be returning on average about $10,000. The returns that you're getting are starting to match the amounts that you are putting in and then over time will grow to be several uh, times larger than that if you only put in $10,000 a year. And now not everyone can put in $10,000 a year. You know, if you're someone that's making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year, $10,000 is, you know, 25 to 33% of your gross income. So if you can only allocate $5,000 a year, it's going to take you that much longer to get up to your $100,000 mark which is why for a lot of folks, it is super hard for them to get to that $100,000 mark where your money can start working for you uh, instead of you working for your money. When you start getting that amount of money, if you've only had zero to 10 or $15,000 and you start getting up to 50 or 60 or $70,000, it is super tempting to spend that money on the things that you have wanted in the past, you know, like your, your toys, your expensive vacations, and just, you know, expenses that aren't going to grow your wealth and are typically either expenses like vacations that's one and done or for like vehicles where they are a depreciating asset and it will, and you will watch your money probably literally rust away if you're in one of the rust belt states. So to illustrate how hard it is to get to that $100,000 mark and how after that your returns really ramp up and you start getting that exponential growth in your investment accounts, I took a look at some different uh, areas between like $0 and a million dollars and how long it's gonna take you to hit each of those 
goals. If you're investing $10,000 a year and you are looking at an average 10% return. So when you do that, if you're starting from zero, zero to $100,000 is going to take you 6.8 years to accumulate that $100,000. And you know, that's like uh, three quarters of a decade. So it's a, you got to be at this for a while and have a whole lot of self-discipline to keep this up. But from 100,000 to 200,000, if you just continue to invest that same $10,000, is only going to take you 4.1 years. So less than half a decade and about two thirds of the time it took to uh, accumulate that first $100,000. Now from $100,000 to half a million dollars will take 11.2 years at the same rate of investing your money. So it is only going to take you just one and a half times what it took you to get from zero to 100,000 to get from 100,000 to half a million. Half a million to 1 million is only going to take 6.3 years. So again, less than the time that it took you to get from zero to 100,000, you are going to add another 500,000 on there. And then 1 million to 2 million is just going to be 6.8 years and every 100,000 in addition to whatever 100,000 you're at will get shorter and shorter and shorter as that compound interest really ramps up your wealth creation without you having to save the money. The nice thing about $100,000 is it is a nice round number that you can set your goals for and it's a uh, it's you're probably doing better than 95% of the people out there if you can make it to that $100,000 mark with your self discipline with your investing and if you can do that you can I'm sure continue to go on and invest more money to grow that like we said you know to 200,000 in 4.1 years after that in addition to it just growing just that $100,000 should return on average $10,000 per year and that's pretty significant i think anyone would be happy with a $10,000 a year raise at their employer and this is just going to return that just from you having that money in these investment accounts in addition $100,000 allows you to take more riskier investments and just do other things with your money now maybe you just leave this money in that account let it grow and you start doing uh, other investments such as maybe you like uh, maybe you like cryptocurrencies maybe you like investing in real estate and that hundred thousand dollars being able to sit there in the background and grow and throw off that ten thousand dollars or more a year allows you the confidence and the financial foundation to take on these riskier investments that may make you more money in the future and have much higher returns than a 10% annual return stock market. Also, if you have at least $100,000, you have a pretty good financial uh, security base. For example, if something would happen like the government shut down the entire economy over a virus, right? If you did lose your job, if you have no money, if you have $10,000, you are, you're pretty screwed. You're basically counting on the government to provide unemployment or family, or you're just going to get evicted or kicked out, especially if it's not during a pandemic type of thing and something just goes bad at work and you end up losing your job or you get fired or there's downsizing or whatever. You work in a political field where the next uh, uh, politician comes in and puts their people in and now you're out of work. The security of having $100,000 means that you can have expenses of $5,000 a month and still be able to just live your normal life for up to 20 months off of that $100,000. That is a giant uh, security blanket that you have and you're not dependent on the government, family, friends, or anything if something uh, bad happens to you in your life. So how do you get from this zero to $100,000 mark? And this is another place where Charlie Munger had a uh, something to say about that. He said, you just got to scratch and dig and work it to get that $100,000. He said, you need to keep your foot to the floor until you get to that $100,000 mark. And then you can kind of back off and take stock of what you have and what's working and not working and be able to really capitalize on what's going well and kind of shift away from the things that you either don't like or the things that aren't working well. The deal is, is you're just going to have to save a lot. 
that's that's the deal. Compound interest isn't on your side for the most part at this point, so you need to cram as much money into that investment that you think is going to be able to get you to your $100,000 mark. And now where are you going to get that money from? You can do a side hustle type of thing if you're into that. You can work a part-time job. You can start up like a little lawn care business or something like that. There's a lot of money actually in cutting grass. That's something I did a long time ago. You can start a YouTube channel if you think that that will make you money, but it probably won't make you money as fast as you think it will. Um, but if you want to like this video and subscribe, it would super duper help me out in making a little bit of money on this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you can reduce your expenses. That is an easy way to boost the amount of income that you have. If you have a lot of subscriptions, if you have a lot of uh, expenses you can cut, like eating out, iced coffees, avocado toast, all of the cliche things that a lot of folks talk about that actually do add up to a lot of money even though people are like well i can't buy a house and i haven't bought an avocado toast in three weeks I, honestly they do add up to a lot of money and you can cut those things out in order to tr take that money and put it in that investment account to get you your first hundred thousand you can sell things things that you don't need even if you have vehicles that are paid off and they're worth a significant amount of money, like if you have a truck or a car that's worth twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollars and you're not making payments on that, if you can sell that for that amount and then you can go out and purchase yourself a cheap beater car, not even a beater, it could be just like a cheaper version. Like if you have uh, an F three fifty Lariat and you don't use it for towing or anything like that, and it's worth thirty, forty thousand dollars, you can sell that vehicle and buy yourself a little uh, F-150 or a Ford Ranger for anywhere between five and $10,000 would get you a pretty nice one. That leaves you with the balance of that that you can put into that account to get your first 100,000. This is one of the things that I did and I didn't necessarily do this on purpose, but I sold my primary residence to move to a new home that I was able to pick up on a discount. And I took a lot of the money that we got from the sale of that that ended up being tax-free because it was a sale of my primary residence that I lived for in for more than uh, two out of five years. And I took $35,000 to really kickstart my uh, goal to 100,000. And then finally, you can increase your income. And this basically comes from either asking for a raise that you think that you deserve, going for a promotion that you think that you deserve, changing careers, changing jobs, either you know in a totally different career or in the same uh, job field, but with a higher paying employer, or you can maybe work some overtime or whatever. Just whatever you can do to scratch and dig, to get that capital, to put in that investment account, to get you to that first $100,000 and then you should be on a solid path to real wealth growth and onto some sort of financial freedom, whatever that means for you. So if you guys are out there and you're just getting started in your investing career or you really haven't taken it seriously and now you want to ramp up, ramp it up and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, you know, because you have 10 or 20 or 30 or $40,000 and it just doesn't feel like things are growing very fast. Don't take it from me, take it from one of the most successful guys in the investment business in that the first 100,000 is the hardest. Again, I have just recently crossed the first 100,000 mark in money that is not in my retirement account. This is just money that I have invested for myself. It was tough and in the beginning there is not a lot of growth, but now every time that I see that the markets are up 1%, I can say, Man, I made $1,000 today with just my investments. I could have been doing anything. I could have been sitting at the pool. If the market went up 1%, I am good for another $1,000, at least on paper. Keep your head in the game. Keep cranking away for that first $100,000, and you'll really start to see that exponential growth uh, over time after that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. That really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, click that subscribe button down there to grow your wealth, increase your success, put you on the road to financial freedom. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.